Hi and welcome to Cubase. On this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Cubase to compose music, create song arrangements, and cool chord progressions fast and easily. So here we have an empty Cubase project. There's nothing in there, so let's start building a track from scratch. What I have here is I have a Groove Agent instance. I've loaded a kit. This is Groove Agent SC5, and uh, I have a few patterns right here, so I can start auditioning those drum loops. Let's say I want to start with this drum loop. So I'm going to drag and drop the pattern into Cubase. And now if I want to extend it for a few bars, I can just hover my mouse in the center of this event right here and just drag like this. So there we go. Now we have a nice eight bar loop. Now let's say I want to add a different groove after this. Something like this, which is a little bit more of a breakdown loop. Let's drag it in there. Perfect. And now maybe I can add a busier loop so that it's my chorus loop. So let's drop it in and extend it for a few bars, maybe four bars this time. And now we have a very basic drum structure. Let's play it back. Now let's say I want to add some instruments to this track. I have a Retrolog synth right here. So I have this sound. Cubase has some really cool tools when it comes to creating harmonies and chord progressions for a song. So let me show you. All you need to do is click on this icon right here and go and add a chord track. There we go. Now we have our chord track right there. And maybe I want to change the color. Maybe I want to turn it green. Done. On the chord track, I can now start adding chords into this track. Now, you don't need to know about music theory or music harmony necessarily. The chord track will really help you create the sound that you have in mind. So let me show you. I'm going to add a few chords right there. I'm going to grab my pencil tool and I'm going to add some chords. One, two, three, four. One for every bar. Now if I want to addition those chords, all I need to do is just record enable an instrument track like the Retrolog right here and just double click on one of the X symbols. And now I can set up the chord. Maybe an A, maybe an A minor or an A minor seventh. Or if I want, I can turn it into an A7 with a 9th. Let's keep it simple, A minor 7th. Let's go to the next chord, and maybe on this chord I want to have like a, an F major. This sounds a little bit too clean, let's try with a major 7th. Nice. If you need some help selecting the next chord, you can just double click, go to Chord Assistant, and then Cubase can give you some suggestions on what chord to use next. And you can change the complexity of the chord suggestions. So if you want some simple chord progression, you can select complexity 1 and you can go up to complexity 7 that will give you some really, really interesting chord progressions. Let's say I want to keep going with my chords right there and I want to add an E. E minor 7th, and maybe on this one, maybe I want like a little bit of a surprise, and I'm gonna have a E flat major with a major 7th. Now, if I want to make this a little bit more interesting, maybe I can change the timing of the chords so we have a little bit of a surprise element. Let's move this chord right here, and maybe this chord right there. And now Retrolog will follow the chord track. Great, now the next thing we can do is add another instrument to this chord track. So I have an ambient pad right here from Hylian Sonic and I'm going to audition this along with the Retrolog pad. So let's just record enable it and play. Now let's say we want to commit these chords into MIDI. It's actually very, very simple to do that. You just select the chords like this, drag them onto the corresponding channel, for example, Retrolog, and there we have our MIDI events, our MIDI files. Now I can just drag these again into my ambient pad, like that, and there I have the MIDI part. Super simple. Now let's say I want to also create the bass line. Let me show you something very cool. If I just drag those chords into my bass, which is right here, which is again from Retrolog, a really nice, nice sub bass. 
Of course, for the bass, we don't want full chords because we need the single notes. So all we need to do is open the key editor in Cubase. So double click, and there we have our key editor like this. And as you can see, Cubase always gives you the bass notes as well. So you can see the bass notes are right here. And these are my chords. So if I want to just keep the bass notes, all I need to do is just select the rest of the notes, hit delete, get rid of them, and now I have my nice bass line. So up to this point, we have our two synth sounds and our bass along with our drums. Let's listen to it. Now, the great thing is, if you want to keep on working with these chords, but add a little bit of groove to your arrangement, it's very, very easy to do. We need to use the chord pads. This is another very cool feature to help you compose in Cubase. So let me go into this section, bar nine, and I'm gonna use my Retrolog, and I'm gonna use my ambient pad as well. So what is the chord pads? Let's bring them up. All you need to do is just click on this icon to bring up the lower zone right there, and we need to click on chord pads. There we go. So here are my chord pads, and each one of these chord pads can hold a separate chord. So I can click on them, and I can build the chord like we did on the chord track, or if I know I'm gonna be using the chords that I used up to this point, I can just drag the chords from the chord track into my chord pads, like this. E minor. And there we go. Now, what can I do after I do this? I can actually trigger those chords on my MIDI keyboard, like this. But with any dynamic that I choose and any rhythm that I want. So now I can just hit record and I can record those chords into Cubase. So just like this, I can record a very complex keyboard part without necessarily having to be a great keyboard player or having knowledge of music theory or music harmony. And now let me show you the MIDI part that we just recorded. I'm gonna double click on this one. And as you can see, I have all the proper MIDI notes like a real keyboard player came into the studio and recorded those MIDI parts. Very, very cool. So once you've recorded those MIDI parts, you can open them into the score editor and actually check out the score of what you played. All you need to do is select the MIDI event, go MIDI and open score editor like this. And there you have the sheet music of what you just recorded there with the chord pads. It's extremely useful if you have a keyboard player coming into the studio to record some parts and you want to print them out and give them a nice score to read so that they can perform. Or if you have recorded everything into your studio and want to send them off to your keyboard player so that he can play them live with you on a live performance. So these are only a few ways that Cubase can help you compose music quickly, easily, while keeping you inspired. Hope you enjoyed this one and we'll see you in the next one.